we made our own legitimate 14 inch EMAD head for snare drums. The popular EMAD bass drum head isn't available in sizes smaller than 16 inches, but we came up with a hack that's able to convert a drum head into an EMAD for snare drum sizes. Okay, I know you're gonna wanna hear more of that and we're definitely gonna have more demos here as well as a full explanation and walkthrough for how you can make your own 14 inch EMAD. But first a little bit of a backstory here for some context. When I worked at D'Addario, I made the case for making a 16 inch version of the EMAD drum head specifically because a lot of people were getting into this idea of converting floor toms into bass drums or even some companies making stock 16 inch bass drums with wooden hoops. At the same time, I thought it'd be pretty cool if drummers could actually put an EMAD on their floor tom. So I knew that we had to do two different versions, both one that allowed for the use with regular triple flange or die cast tom hoops, and then one that would work with bass drum hoops and claws. Of course, as soon as you start offering more options, people want you to expand upon that. So we had the 26 inch version, we had a 16 inch version and everything in between. Now people wanted to have a 14 inch version for the snare drums. Unfortunately, it just wasn't going to make sense from a business standpoint. We weren't going to sell enough of these things to justify all of the expenditures and tooling, the extra boxes, all that stuff that was going to be required to be able to launch something like this in a new size. Now, flash forward to a couple months ago when I was just sitting around experimenting with stuff and I had this crazy idea. What if we took two drum heads, stacked them on top of each other, cut out the center portion of the top drum head, and then put the foam piece from a 16 inch EMAD in the 14 inch setup. Bear with me here. What we've got with the foam ring that's used on the 16 inch EMAD is actually smaller than 14 inches in outer diameter. That means that it can work kind of like a studio ring on top of a snare drum. Now, of course, if you just put that on top of the snare drum, it's not gonna do a whole lot because there's nothing really holding it on there. So it's barely gonna have any kind of impact. As soon as you put something on top of that though, it controls it, it keeps it in place, but allows it to float just a little bit, just like the EMAD ring on a bass drum head. Before we go any further, why don't you give this thing a listen? So we've got this tuned quite low right now. We've got a UV-1 as the main drum head on the snare drum and then an old clear Evans G-1 as the top portion. And again, we're gonna show you how this is made in just a bit. I really like how this feels and I think a lot of that actually comes from the UV-1 being the choice of head as the main portion, but you could do this with literally any drum head as the primary playing surface. As with our favorite drum hacks, this doesn't cost anything extra. As long as you've already got a 16 inch EMAD, which I know you may not already have that, but in this case, we've got one on the floor tom here. So that head is already being used. We've got the thin foam ring in use with the floor tom, and then that frees up the wider of the foam rings to be used on the snare drum here. It's worth mentioning right now that what you're hearing is the raw drum sounds. There's no EQ, there's no compression, there's no gating, no reverb, none of that. Just raw sounds as is. If you'd like to know what we're using for gear today, hit up the description below. We've got everything listed out there for you. And if you're enjoying this episode and you want to support our efforts here because we put a lot of effort into creating these, please consider hitting up the Patreon. Link is in the description below as well. If you join over there, you'll get access to all sorts of additional material, including Symbol Sounds, which is our series dedicated exclusively to symbols only available over on Patreon.
Now, of course, we wanna show you how we actually made this drum head hack and show you how you can make your own. We used a piece of plywood, a pair of clamps, a single screw and screwdriver, and a knife for this project. We secured the plywood to our work cart with the clamps, placed a clear G1 drum head upside down in the center of the plywood, and drove a screw into the center of the head to anchor it. We placed the wider of the EMAD rings on the drum head to use for reference, and then pressed the knife into the head at the edge. Next, we removed the foam ring and slowly rotated the drum head in order to cut the center section out. For installation, we simply removed the batter side counter hoop, set the EMAD foam ring on top of the primary drum head, and then placed the modified head on top of that. From here, we placed the counter hoop back on top, engaged all the tension rods, finger tightening them. With some experimentation, we tuned the batter head up to the desired pitch. Also, in case you're wondering who I am, this is a two-man show here. My name's Ben. I'm usually the one behind the cameras doing all the post-production work, editing everything, setting up, planning, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Today, I'm handling this episode. Cody's got the day off. Hope you're enjoying this one so far. As with most of the demos we do, we don't just want to sit out one tuning here, so we're going to go beyond this super low setup, tune it up a little bit higher, and see how it behaves overall. So there's a little bit more of a discernible pitch coming from the batter head now. It's not necessarily something that I don't like, but it's something to be aware of. And I guess this depends especially on the drum head that you're using as the main surface. We could certainly go even higher. And if you wanted to try this out on your own, you can see what range you like the most. This works really well on a lot of different drums. And I have to say, I was really impressed overall. I didn't necessarily have such high hopes for how this was going to perform. I thought it looked kind of cool and maybe it would work, and it's actually exceeding my expectations overall. As far as I can tell, there's no risk to the drum head being used or the drum itself in this setup. One potential thing to be aware of, even though I didn't experience it personally, was that if your tension rods aren't quite long enough to reach past those two stacked drum head hoops, you may have some issues getting them into the lugs. The best way to remedy this is to make sure that you're getting everything finger tight starting out, just barely threading each of the opposing tension rods before you start tightening them down, and that'll ensure that you're bringing the hoop down evenly and getting contact with all of those lugs. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below with what your thoughts are on this drum hack itself. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed to Sounds Like a Drum and have your notifications turned on so that you find out every time we release brand new videos. We've got new ones dropping every Tuesday with some surprise ones thrown in there throughout the week every once in a while. So after experimenting with this a decent amount, I'm starting to realize that this could be kind of the tip of the iceberg for hacks involving this setup of a piggybacked drum head on top of another one. Who knows what you could do? You could tuck all sorts of stuff in there, throw some jingles on top. There's definitely more experiments to be had and maybe you'll see some of those from us in the future. In the end, we thought that this was a relatively easy hack and a super cool sound that doesn't sound exactly like any other sort of deep, fat, low, muffled snare drum sound that we've heard from any other products out there or any other methods of muffling. Is this the be all end all of snare drum muffling? Certainly not, but it was still a lot of fun and we got some interesting sounds and all in all, I'd say that this was an effective drum hack. <laughs> 